Hello, friends and family from around the world. This is Mike with Daily Events Worldwide, and we are on January 2nd, 2025. Welcome to another surviving day on the planet, and welcome to the Daily Do, giving you your space weather update as well as earthquakes, volcanoes, and world weather. Always starting out here, looking at the sun for the past 48 hours, large plasma filaments in the southern hemisphere right now, as noted in the early day space weather update short. Going to be keeping an eye on those over the next two to three days as they do become Earth-facing. We also have Earth-facing coronal holes to show and multiple sunspot regions. Having a look at 304 angstroms here, amazing images brought to you by Go16 and Gong mixed with daily events worldwide. You can see that plasma filament bottom left-hand side stretching from the surface, getting ready to either destabilize, snap away, or fall back. Another light here, we can see massive coronal hole in the northern hemisphere. And as well, another one in the southern. Amazing to see the heliosphere in action. Looking at our sun, another light here, nice and soft on the eyes. Multiple sunspot regions. No major solar flares to report for the past 24 hours since last night's update. Also wanted to give you a quick look here at our magnetic field lines on our sun right now. Every so often I like to show this, as right now we have a large coronal hole Earth facing. And you can see the magnetic field being severely affected on our sun by that incoming coronal hole, which is now Earth facing and is set and can will, sorry, will increase our solar wind speeds. Right now, they're just under 400 kilometers per second. Last night, they were up and over 500. This is our sun, the last 48 hours. Current space weather conditions, we are under R1, minor radio blackout impacts expected as well. G1, minor geomagnetic storm impacts. Solar winds are coming in at 480 kilometers per second. Solar X-ray flux showing minor C-class solar flare events after the strong and long duration M-class solar flare yesterday. Proton flux is low, geomagnetic activity coming back down after hopping up to a KP8 when we got hit by that most recent solar storm. Visible here on the Space Weather Prediction Center showing their space weather spiral. We also have another CME to contend with January 3rd into 4th. Got a double shot CME coming at us. And that took off from the sun halfway through the day yesterday. A big CME is on its way. Arrival tomorrow night and into the day after. Having a look at the ISWA space prediction spiral showing most recent coronal mass ejection taking off towards Mercury, and that is the one we just saw at the Space Weather Prediction Center. We're showing LASCO 3 here, the wide spectrum of all the space weather events, showing the last two days of imagery with LASCO 3. Most of the action was north and as well equatorial turning away, but we are getting a glancing blow from that most recent coronal mass ejection. So stay tuned. Last night, Aurora Borealis was visible in both the Northern and Southern Hemisphere, so stay tuned to Daily Events Worldwide as you could get your forecasts here daily. Having a look at tonight's Aurora Viewline versus tomorrow's, be pretty far south, down to Montana, almost Nevada. Now let's get to earthquakes the past 24 hours as we've got quite a, a situation brewing across the world we're going to start out here with our deepest earthquake the past 24 hours, 502 kilometer depth, the Vuka Fiji, 5.5 earthquake there, South Macquarie Island, 5.1 Nazca Plate, and our largest earthquake the past 24 hours, 6.1 magnitude earthquake, Calama, Chile, no tsunami with that earthquake, but we're off the shoreline. Notable earthquake there, 5.2 Tristan da Cunha as well, all of the earthquakes continuing. 
at Awash, Ethiopia, just recently seeing a yet another 5.1 magnitude earthquake. Notable earthquakes here, eastern Tibet region, northern northeastern China, and as well, very, very quiet across the Philippines, West Pacific plate right now. Increasing seismicity south of the Lucian Islands is a little bit worrisome. Across the United States, largest being a 4.7 here at Cobb, California. That was just after midnight last night that struck and a swarm continues on as USGS is reporting 366 the past 24 hours and about 150 of them have been at Cobb, California. So normally our average is about 200 to 230. Largest earthquake past 24 hours, USGS, Calama, Chile. And then let's have a look at California State and the Springs region, Cobb, California, at the geysers. 4.7 earthquake, followed by about 120 earthquakes through the region. Other than that, it's been pretty centered on that point not really widespread as it normally is so something is brewing my friends and family quite the pressure release valve with kilauea right now on the pacific plate and as well whatever happened over the last few days other than the fantail volcano that erupted in africa showing here the last seven days for earthquakes Aleutian islands and then Africa, Awash, Ethiopia. As you can see, this is an ancient volcanic field. Fantail Volcano is right here. See them craters? This is a little bit worrisome. All this recent seismicity and volcanic activity in Ethiopia. Having a look here at Volcano Discovery showing the active and erupting volcanoes through the region. We got Niragongo and as well Old Doinyo. And of course, Erta Ale, which we have been posting for years. But now we have the awakened Fantail Volcano, which was updated December 29th, 2024, after seeing multiple earthquakes through the region. 4.5 ranging to 4.5.1. African rip zone ready to split. Who knows, but stay aware and prepared. Across the United States, notable earthquake here. Brownlee, Nebraska yesterday. Other than that, no major swarms or notable earthquakes to report. This is the last 24 hours. Now let's have a quick glance at the last seven days for earthquakes, including... All of this recent activity in Africa. Largest earthquakes this week. Chile. North Atlantic. And as well, northern Japan. But the earthquakes are piling up in Awash, Ethiopia. And interesting activity. Scotia Plate at the South Sandwich Islands. Michael Volcano. Right now, we have an active and erupting 69 volcanoes. Stay tuned as we will be giving you a fresh number this week. And thank you so much for subscribing. Thank you for all the love and support to this channel. Now let's have a look at our SO2 forecast as it has not changed much since yesterday. I still don't know exactly where the eruption occurred, but a very large eruption happened on our planet, and it was most likely the Fantail volcano in Africa, Merapi volcano in Java, or this all could be from Kilauea as well, as that erupted the day before Christmas Eve. Just having a look around the world, most of it is central around the equator. Notable big plume there, but that's normal. This is not normal. What we're seeing here on this SO2 map is a catastrophe unfolding before our eyes. Sulfur dioxide 
does create acid rain. And when we've got this much pumping into our atmosphere, got to be a little bit worried about our future. But much love, everybody, and thank you so much for tuning in today. I hope you enjoy the updates. Having a look around the rest of the world, notable plumes still spewing out of Hawaii in the Central Pacific. Now let's get to world weather as we've got a big storm sweeping across Quebec right now. Blizzard-like conditions. Snow squalls across Ontario. Watch for a low-pressure system this week to scoot into southern parts of Ontario. Alberta Clipper moves in for the long range. And so do the cold temperatures as the polar vortex for t- winter 2024 is ramped up and keeping things cold across the planet right now. These cold temperatures across Siberia will be sweeping across our planet. So stay tuned for the daily updates. Having a look here at the highs and the lows around the world. And again, much love, everybody. Thank you for tuning in tonight, taking time out of your day to check out the most recent updates on earthquakes, volcanoes, world weather, and of course, space weather. Going to leave you here looking at the Pacific Ocean as we've got multiple strong lows still brewing across the North Pacific and an abnormal, strong, large high-pressure ridge dominating the Southeast Pacific. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you enjoyed the show. If you did, please don't forget to give a thumbs up. Get in the comments section. Let me know your favorite part. Give a timestamp. Maybe share with a friend or family. All the best in the new year. Grateful to be alive in 2025. We're prepared.